Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at a signature lighting style of prolific film director Ridley Scott. I totally understand he is not a cinematographer, but he definitely directs the cinematography of his films and he tends to use this lighting style again and again. It looks fantastic. It is very easy to set up. Uh, you can use it with lots of different types of lights uh, because the light isn't close to the subject. It's not going to be burning the eyes of the person. It is one of the big uh, tricks in his bag that he uses again and again. You see it in movies like Blade Runner, in his uh, Sword and Sandals epic Gladiator, in Black Rain, and it is a variation on the backlight key fill bounce uh, that most cinematographers use in most scenes, uh, but it has a sort of twist to it which I find really really interesting and I've started using in my work. It was the RSA or Ridley Scott Associates, which is Ridley Scott's production company. Uh, it was their house style in the 80s. So they used it in almost every commercial that they did and people got really good with it and that carried over into Ridley Scott's 80s movies and some of his 90s and, and 2000s movies. He doesn't use it as much anymore. He's moved on to, I guess, environmental lighting where you build lights into the sets that you're working with when you're doing $100 million plus movies. But back when he was making not quite independent movies, but lower budget films, he used it a lot. So let's take a look at it. It's gonna be easy to explain uh, this style of lighting if we first look at how these lights are traditionally used. And we need to look at what's called the line, which is the uh, line between the two actors in a scene, the, uh, the eye line. The line's important so that you don't cross the line and end up having both characters who are facing each other facing the same way on the screen and thus confuse the audience to the geography of the location and the scene. So it is traditional to have your key light on the upstage, the far side of the line. So if this was my eye line, I was talking to someone else, you wouldn't put the key on this side of the line, which makes the, like I have here, uh, which makes this, the person's face flat. You would put it on the far side of the line from the camera, which makes this side dark. And so when you do a backlight, you usually use the uh, dark side, the uh, towards camera side, as your backlight because that's the part that needs the light. However, if you want to use a single light, it makes sense to use a very strong backlight and bounce it into a reflector or a piece of poly or a piece of white card in order to have enough power from the blown out or very strong backlight to then fill back in as your key light. This smash bounce method uh, that Ridley Scott uses a lot, you place the backlight on the far side of the line, like the key light. It ends up putting a rim light on this side, the far side, the key side of the person's face. You then place the poly between the, or the poly bounce between your um, backlight and the camera so that you don't get flares in the camera. And especially with older lenses in the 70s and 80s, uh, there was, they were uncoded. There was a lot of uncontrolled flare. And so having a really powerful light going straight into the camera lens caused all kinds of uh, flare problems. Now with uh, modern lenses and coatings, uh, the, you actually want that flare sometimes for stylistic purposes. But back on the K35s and lenses like that that were being used for uh, Blade Runner, flare was much harder to control. So they placed the poly between the light and the lens to control that flare and you ended up with this really interesting double key or wrapped key uh, effect where you get um, a hard, bright backlight on the key side, on the, on the upstage side of the person's face. Then that's wrapped around by a big poly board um, that gives more of a beauty light and puts this nice light in people's eyes. And then you let the, uh, the toward camera side fade off into dark. And then one thing they'll do is um, add a haze to the room or light that side of the set so that uh, that silhouette becomes uh, more pronounced and it doesn't just um, bleed off into darkness. For this setup, I use the Nanlite Forza 300B. It is a 300 watt bicolor chip on board monolight that is almost 40,000 lux at one meter. So it is the same brightness as a 2K tungsten bulb. Though, because it doesn't generate nearly as much heat, you can use it a lot closer to town. It is a good choice for this kind of setup because you can match it to the ambient light coming in the room 
um, from the windows, no matter what it's bouncing off or what color temperature it is. And it's also strong enough um, to create as harsh or a, a soft uh, backlight as you want. And you can, with a Bowens mount, you can attach any kind of light shaping device to the front of it. It comes with this cool mount for the ballast uh, that fits two feet mount batteries and actually attaches to the light stand and means that uh, you don't need to sandbag the light because the ballast acts as its own sandbag, which I thought was cool. And at uh, F2 on the uh, C200, I was running this light at just 9%. Uh, that's strong enough to give that really harsh uh, backlight and still bounce in to give the correct fill. It is great to have this technique in your back pocket if you catch yourself outdoors at night and need to put some interesting light on someone with just what you can carry as far as batteries go. And you can even uh, use different colored card, uh, say a warmer color card to uh, tint your bounce differently uh, than the backlight that's coming in or a blue colored card to cool it down um, and differentiate it, give some depth uh, from your backlight, which is bouncing in to create your key. I found that it's useful to put your light in such a place as that it makes sense to have your bounce uh, 45 degrees to the side and 45 degrees above, uh, much like I have this light, uh, because that illuminates the face nicely. It gives uh, a nice cheek shadow, gives a nice separation, but also gives a nice drop shadow under the chin, which uh, makes the you know, face more prominent and doesn't have the face disappear into the chin and flatten the um, person's features. That is my look at Ridley Scott's 80s lighting style uh, that he still uses today, though more occasionally, and has become a real standard in the science fiction and genre filmmaking world. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.